The most important takeaways of law number 21. Play a sucker to catch a sucker. Seem dumber than your mark. The feeling that someone else is more intelligent than we are is intolerable. Nobody likes to feel stupid, especially in front of others. Better to make your targets feel smarter than they actually are. The best way to do this is to do it either indirectly or directly. They both work equally. What's even better is for you to showcase that you're a bit of an idiot and maybe even a moron. Create an air of complete naivete. Lay it on for them a little thick if you have to, but don't be too obvious. Make it convincing and they will never suspect you of anything and you will always run rings around them. And simply never insult or impugn someone's intelligence. Feeding their intelligence feeds their vanity. Feeding into their tastes feeds into their vanity. Feeding into their desires feeds into their vanities and eventually their guard will come down. And most often than not, appearing to be less intelligent and even a bit of a fool is the perfect disguise in all areas of life. As stated, look like a harmless pig and no one will suspect you of harboring dangerous ambitions. They may even promote you since you seem so likable and even subservient. When you play the fool, you're essentially off of everyone's radar and you move as you please. And remember, when the time comes for you to strike and to act with vigor and decisiveness, you will catch everyone off guard and they will play right into your hands. Never forget that it is always better to make people think and believe that they are smarter and even more sophisticated than you are. It rarely pays to reveal the true nature of your intelligence. Therefore, you must downplay it at all times. They will keep you around because you make them feel better about themselves. And the longer that you are around, the more opportunities you have to deceive them. And remember this, if people do inadvertently learn the truth, that you are actually much smarter than you look, they will actually admire you more for being discreet than for making a brilliant show. All right guys, so law number 21, play a sucker to catch a sucker. Seem dumber than your mark. I'm gonna make this a quick video and uh, I'm gonna run down about the most important things that I came across. So without further ado, here we go. So uh, this law is very important. Uh, please don't mind me because I actually wrote this down so I don't forget. This law is very important because envy is one of the most important human characteristics that no one ever talks about. No one literally ever talks about it. That's how difficult it is to talk about it because most of the time it's an embarrassing feeling to have. Uh, but it's normal to feel envy. It only becomes a problem when you act on it. We have two forms of envy, passive envy and active envy. Passive envy is the one you feel in your everyday life. It's completely normal, whereas active envy is very dangerous and it's very toxic. It's the type of envy that people will actively go out the, of their way to try and sabotage you. The law starts off by showcasing an observance of the law. Philip Arnold and John Slack, two con men pulled the wool over Asbury Harpending and companies and company's eyes and fleece them out of their money from pretending to state that they have discovered a diamond mine. There's not much to say here. Uh, then it starts talking about the Prussian counselor Otto von Bismarck and how he outsmarted the Austrian negotiator Count Blum in signing a document first by challenging him to a duel of cards that the Austrian negotiator was fond of and Bismarck just played stupid because he knew Count Blum or Blum took the game way too seriously. So as a result, Count Bloom didn't see the fine print when he signed a document. And uh, Bismarck was like, aha, I got you. I, I couldn't believe my eyes when you couldn't read the, when you signed. I, I would have never guessed that you would sign this le letter. So that was that. Then it starts talking about Claudius uh, before he became emperor of Rome and the prince of France, who later became Louis the 13th. Uh, they used this tactic when uh, those above them suspected they might have designs on the throne. By playing the fool as young men, they were left alone. And then, uh, this is actually in the reversal that I, was, that I found very important for you guys to know. There is, however, one situation where it pays to do the opposite. Uh, when, you can never, when you can cover up a deception with a show of intelligence, right? When you don't act like you're dumber than your mark. So, when you show... That you're actually, actually very smart. 
In matters of smarts, as in most things, appearances are what count. If you seem to have authority and knowledge, people will believe what you say. This can be very useful in getting you out of a scrape. Joseph Duvet sold, sold, sold an artwork, whether real or fake, or Duveen, I accidentally said Duvet, uh, to a millionaire tycoon, and a critic came to inspect the artwork to see if it's real or fake. The critic studied it for some time, then finally said, you know, I don't think this is right. You know, he followed the young woman as she heard to tell her father what he had said, and then turned to Duveen, but Duveen just laughed. How amusing, do you realize, young man, that at least 20 other art experts here and in Europe have been taken in too, and have said that painting isn't genuine, just like you. And you've made the same mistake. His confident tone and air of authority intimidated the Frenchman who apologized for his mistake. Duveen knew that the art market was flooded with fakes, and that, meant, and that many paintings had been falsely ascribed to old masters. He tried his best to distinguish the real from the fake, but in his, but in his zeal to sell, he often overplayed a work's authenticity. What mattered to him was that the buyer believed he had bought a Durer. I don't know how to say that word, by the way. Durer. And that Duveen himself convinced everyone of his expertness through his air of irreproachable authority. Thus, it is important to be able to play the professor when necessary and never impose such an attitude for its own sake. So, guys, it speaks for itself, right? Don't try to be a smartass. Play dumber than you, th than you are, actually. Play dumber than your mark. Pretend to be stupid, a moron, a fool. Everyone will love you. Huh. That's facts. And you'll get a raise. You'll get promoted. You'll get leveled up. And people will wonder, how the hell did you become such high rank individual? So much so high in the hierarchy, right? You'll probably even become president, right? Biden's president right now. Uh, what can I say, guys? And, I mean, we're at two wars, right? Inflation. Gas prices are up. Market prices are up. Grocery prices are up. Real estate market prices are up. Crime is up. It's crazy. So, I think Kamala has a lot more to do with it than Biden does as well. Because uh, I think she's probably brains behind. I'm not trying to get political. But, yeah. Anyways, crazy. Crazy, guys. It's crazy. No one can afford anything now. But see, that's what I'm saying. Like, someone is Biden, but also you have to also count and play into effect about his health. So that his health has been deteriorating a lot the past couple of years. So, um, not to talk bad about anyone, but the market is what it is right now. Everything is high. There's too much crime. There's so much going on, and it speaks for itself. So, I'm just guys letting you know. So, be smart. So let's go into let's get into the quotes. Now, there's nothing of which a man is prouder than of intellectual ability, for it is this that gives him his commanding place in the animal world. It is an exceedingly rash thing to let anyone see that you are decidedly superior to him in this respect, and to let other people see it too. Hence, while rank and riches may always reckon upon differential treatment in society. That is something which intellectual ability can never expect. To be ignored is the greatest favor shown to it, and if people notice it at all, it is because they regard it as a piece of impertinence. Impertinence. I don't know how the people in Great Britain say it, but I would guess impertinence. Impertinence. Or else as something to which his professor has no legitimate right and upon which he dares to pride himself, and in retaliation and revenge for his conduct, people secretly try and humiliate him in some other way. And if they wait to do this, it is only for a fitting opportunity. A man may be as humble as possible in his demeanor, and yet hardly ever get people to overlook his crime in standing intellectually above them. In the Garden of Roses, Saudi, Saudi, so, in the Garden of Roses, Saudi makes the remark. By the way, Saudi is a Persian poet, an ancient Persian poet. There's a lot of ancient P Persian poets in this, uh, 
like Rumi and some more, Dervi the Dervish and the, the Persian ancestry and the Persian culture is very profound and it's so in depth and so it's it's so pronounced, right? It's so dense. And it affects all parts of the world, from the Arabics, you know, from the Arabic culture, the Arabic language, the English language, the Spanish language. It's weird how things happen, right? So, but that's what's up. In the Garden of Roses, Saudi makes the remark, You should know that foolish people are a hundredfold more averse to meeting the wise than the wise are indisposed for the company of the foolish. On the other hand, it is a real recommendation to be stupid. For just as warmth is agreeable to the body, so it does the mind good to feel its own superiority. Well, I didn't say that. So it does the mind good to feel its superiority. And a man will seek company lightly to give him this feeling, as instinctively as he will approach the fireplace or walk in the sun if he wants to get warm. But this means that he will be disliked on account of his superiority. And if a man is to be liked, he must really be inferior in point of intellect. This is a Arthur Schopenhauer, 1788-1860. Arthur Schopenhauer is a badass, by the way. But, and this is facts. No one likes to feel stupid. You make people feel good about themselves, about their intellect, about their taste, about their sophistication, right? Wow, you're so smart. Matthew, you're so smart. President Donald Trump, right? You know, just whoever. President Obama, I don't care. Wow, you have such great taste in clothing. Wow. Wow, I I'm a dumbass compared to you. Right? You could play on to narcissist in this way, actually. And they will love you. Right? They will adore you. They'll gift you so many free things. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's how that goes. And, um... See if there's anything else I would like to talk about. The Chinese have a phrase, masquerading as a swine to kill the tiger. This refers to an ancient hunting technique in which the hunter clothes himself in the hide and snout of a pig and mimics its grunting. The mighty tiger thinks a pig is coming his way and lets it get close, savoring the prospect of an easy meal. But it is the hunter who has the last laugh. Masquerading as a swan works wonders on those who, like tigers, are arrogant and overconfident. The easier they think it is to prey on you, the more easily you can turn the tables. This trick is also useful if you're ambitious. You'd find yourself low in the hierarchy. That feels, I feel like I'm in that boat, guys. Like, like on my way to the presidency, I gotta, gotta do it big. No, I'm just kidding. On my way to becoming king. Right? But, um... On the real, you know, I, might, I think I'll make a great president if I did go for it. Because if I did go for if I did go for presidency, I know I'm going on a tangent right now. But if I did go on a, you know, if I did, I would do it because there's a need for it. And people want me to do it. So that, that's a serious job and position to have. So, um, but that's for when the time comes down to it. If it ever does. I leave that to God. I believe in, you know, have faith. He's the greatest. And, um, yeah, I'm not even <laughs> focused on that right now. So, uh, let's enjoy what we have. Image, the opossum. In plain dead, the opossum plays stupid. Many a predator has therefore left it alone, who could believe that such an ugly and unintelligent, nervous little creature could be capable of such deception. So, the question you might ask regarding this little phrase, okay, the opossum play dead. Why didn't the predator eat it? Right? The predator is, he wants to eat. He's hungry. Uh, I would assume that more often than not, the predator, let's say it's a lion, right? Sees an opossum. He wants to eat it, right? But if the opossum plays dead, more often than not, I think any predator would eat the prey, like the opossum. But I think what this image is trying to say is that if you play dead, right, if you play dumb or dead, in this case, as an opossum, then uh, as a result, the lion's going to be like, man, this isn't even worth eating. It's probably disgusting anyway, because it wasn't worth the effort. So it's not going to be as, uh, in, per in Farsi, we say laziz. It's not, it's not going to be as delicious, right, and, not t and as tender. 
So when you think about it, it makes sense because a predator, he doesn't think something's worth the trophy isn't worth it if it's not worth working for, right? So it kind of sort of makes sense. I get it. Authority. Know how to make use of stupidity. The wisest man plays this card at times. There are occasions when the highest wisdom consists in appearing not to know. You must not be ignorant, but capable of playing it. It is not much good being wise among fools, insane among lunatics. Hence, right, when you think about the political landscape, the Democrats and the conservatives, both sides think each of them are lunatics. And each side think they're also smart and geniuses. It is hilarious when you think about it. He who poses as a fool is not a fool. The best way to be well received by all is to clothe yourself in the skin of the dumbest of brutes. Balastar Gratian. Man, this is fantastic. You know, I might need to... If Balastar Gratian has a book, a couple books, I need to read his novels. I don't know. But he's fantastic. How Robert Greene was able to pick these quotes out. He seems like a really, very wise man. So, that's all, folks. I hope you really enjoyed this. And, um... I appreciate you guys for watching. And I haven't made any dating videos or... Uh, they're all, like, in shorts and, you know, reels and stuff like TikTok and stuff like that. But I'm just taking how God, you know, the way God wants me to go. I'm not trying to force things too much. A lot of people on YouTube, they tend to force things. But I want to find my voice. You know, I'm about to hit 1,000 subscribers. Uh, I'm blessed to have one. And each, each and every one of y'all who are watching this, I appreciate y'all. Because... Uh, you guys are learning, and I feel like I'm making an impact. And hopefully that we, we can really make a bigger impact in the future in different ways. You know, it might be through YouTube, it might not. Whatever. Whatever it might be. I hope that I can give back to the community at large, and the community is the world. So, whether it be in America, Great Britain, India, Asia, it, it doesn't matter. Brazil, wherever. I hope that I bring value to you. So thank you so much for watching and let's see what life ha brings us and where our paths will go. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.